Hey, hey there, Twitch chat. Happy Saturday. How y'all doing? Whoa. Hey there, Yggdrasil. Stiff tacos. Someone needs to get some soft shells. How's it going, Dirty Dirk? Miss Achiever. Skato. Blue Fire. King Morso. Purpley Sky. And everybody else. How's it going, Lenny Poo? What's up, folks? Some amazing uh, Cursed to Golf Jam. Still one of my most unexpected, delightful soundtracks. Soft Shell is superior. I like the... Um, this might be carb overload for some. I like the, the hard shell taco inside a soft shell taco with cheese in between. That's a strat for me. Then you get the crunch and the cohesiveness. Right, the cheesy gordita crunch strategy. Hey, if it works, it works. Let me just tweak something here. Okay. Hey, good enough. Tried that once too cheesy for you. Must be a tough life. With a low cheese tolerance. <laughs> 5280 says, used to work Tex-Mex at a dining hall and I would make that all the time. Hell yeah. Miss the dining hall food for good years. What is the dot on the eye supposed to be? It looks like a flaming... It's just a blue flame. You could maybe call it a crystal. Doesn't seem to correspond to anything in the game here. This, this eye in the middle. Do I like Taco Bell? Bit of a guilty pleasure. I only go there like twice a year for a crunch wrap. But I do enjoy it when I go. Yeah, it does kind of look like the same shape as the end of the Watcher's staff, although this this long predates the Watcher, right? This this was here when only the Ironclad and the Silent were here. But yeah, it does have that same shape to it. That's true. So our last run, I remember this going badly initially. Okay, let me hit Runic Pyramid. What was it this run? Oh, no, no, this run went badly initially, and then we did, couldn't quite beat the heart. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I took 20 damage to upgrade two defends, and then <laughs> it kind of went poorly from there. We ended up uh, resting on floor six. We had to use the Ghost in a Jar on floor eight. One does wonder if I'd been able to keep that Ghost in a Jar to the very end, would we have won? The answer is maybe. How much more often would I take Ring of the Serpent if it didn't replace the Starting Relic? Oh, it'd be way better then. I would be taking it quite a lot. And building zero cost or low cost decks to go with it. How's it going, Aziwa? I have heard of the Spire board game. I checked it out on uh, Tabletop Simulator back when the original Kickstarter launched. I did not order a physical copy myself as I don't do a whole lot of uh, like sit down in person board gaming these days. Um, so I didn't anticipate having a crowd to play a physical copy of this game with. And I get enough time in the Spire as it is. I didn't feel the need to um, add another medium for that. So I don't have a physical copy of it myself. Though I could still see myself uh, acquiring one once it starts showing up in uh, hobby shops. Uh, there's a local shop near me that I think ordered a few copies. I could pick up one from them probably. To look into that. Ooh. 199 gold for a rare relic. Or we could just take the money. Interesting. We have Guardian as our Act 1 boss here as the Silent. And I'd say an overall pretty interesting looking act.
There are options for early ish elites, but they're not required. I like that. Would I ever take five combats in a row? There's a more reasonable path. Mark this in green for now. Maybe mark this red here. That's too many events. We could do four combats in one event, that's better. I think on that. Could take a hundred gold and go to one of these shops as well. Buy a shop or common relic to begin with. We've had first board game, yes, but what about second board game? Zemnis says, what are the main things to look for when choosing a path? So, uh, everything I'm about to say is specific to Act 1, here at the start of the run. In Act 1, your main priority is to... successfully make it to and defeat your boss while acquiring as much power along the way as possible. And the ways to get power in Slay the Spire are to add cards to your deck, to upgrade cards that you have, to get relics, um, and to get gold. Basically, all of that gives power. Or uh, better yet, to trade gold for things in a shop is actually what gives you the power from gold. So in Act 1, you're looking f to maximize the following nodes. You want as many rest sites, elites, and shops wherein you have at least 200 gold, as you can get. So those, those are the things to look for. Rest sites, elites, and shops where you have an actual amount of money. With a few caveats, uh, elites are challenging at all. So you can't just wander into an elite fight on floor 6 without enough preparation. For example, taking three combats, two events into the elite... Um, is not going to be sufficient to defeat the Elite. Usually, I, I think you need three or four card rewards and an upgrade or a shop in order for an Elite to be viable consistently. Although that can change once you see the rewards from your first combats. But without knowing what you're going to get, you, you need three to four combats and a rest site or shop before an Elite is, is viable. The later in the act the Elite is, the better. So any Elite that's after the mid-act chest is a bit easier to deal with, usually speaking. Um, you don't want to take too many events in Act 1, not too many question marks. Try to max around three, two or three in Act 1, because you need to get card rewards and money from combats in order to get started and start building a deck for Act 2. But usually my path is going to be whatever path has the highest combined uh, fires and elites... while avoiding overly risky paths, like going in for the Burning Elite early here, is too risky. But events are exciting! They are. They are fun. Yeah, they are fun. Maybe I'll go with a 100 gold start here. 100 gold can buy me an Apotheosis. I like that. Take like 100 gold. Okay, I've learned the lesson. With this opening draw against Jawworm, we have to play two strikes. This is not double defend, one strike. We have to play two strikes here. You could even make an argument for three. But I'm going to play two. Jawworm versus Silent can be a fairly tough matchup. This enemy blocks often and can buff their strength. And that gives Silent a pretty hard time. I'm going to take four more as well here. If you draw too many defends on a turn when you don't need them, it's easy to fall behind in damage here. And then you're toast. So here we get the kill. Okay, we get a Cunning Potion. And we're offered Noxious Fumes Floor 1, which I really like really against any Act 1 boss, applying poison every turn. Do I prefer one health enemies or plus max health for silence? 
One health enemies, if you can get an elite for free, is pretty good. Otherwise, the max health is, is better, usually. Silent doesn't often take a lot of damage in her opening combats, although we just did show a bad Jawworm fight. Which can definitely happen. That's 13. Perfect. No, not that. This. Could play Fumes. I think it's better to just play a Strike here, though. The two Strikes kills. Uh, the middle, uh, the back one doesn't attack next turn. Let's hit the front one now. Lice can't attack three times in a row. Just not allowed. Do this. Backflip versus Dagger Spray. Dagger Spray gives more direct damage in an AoE. Backflip draws some cards and blocks. That part's nice, especially against Guardian. We might find ourselves in a hard pool fight sooner rather than later, which makes me want a Dagger Spray. And KVX, a dad joke for the crowd. Did you hear about the silent that was allergic to knives? You broke out in shivs. Oh. No refunds to shot. All right, here's our first shop. The only relic we can afford is the medical kit, which I wouldn't call very good. There are some pretty good cards here. Calculated gamble and footwork are premium uncommons on silent. We could afford a card remove or a potion. Overall, I'm not thrilled with this shop. And as far as the card remove, I might want to wait on that. Uh, I was thinking we might go to this shop later in the act. And it seems to me like saving some money might be a good idea. So what if we just buy the footwork? When did this game click for me, says the Illuminator. Pretty quickly. Um, but I had, I had background in, in deck builders. So... I played a lot of a physical card game called Dominion, which is a really good time for two to four people. Uh, that has some of the same fundamental principles as Slay the Spire, and that kind of helped this game click. But uh, I'd say it was definitely within the first dozen hours or so that this game really pulled me in. As of now, we're we're at over 7,000 hours of Slay the Spire played, which is a truly enormous amount. I do call this the most replayable video game that I've ever played, and I still feel like that's true. Last Shop feels like it competes with a chance at Dead Adventure. I mean, uh, instead of taking here, yeah? That's true. An extra event could be a big deal. Then why the need for Spire 2? It's a good question. I'm sure the devs know better than I. For the longest time, I said they wouldn't and shouldn't make a Spire 2, precisely because the first game was so well done. But uh, there is a Spire 2, so that's pretty cool. How do I justify not taking Gamba here? Well, 90 gold is two-thirds of a relic. Is or, Well, almost two-thirds of a relic. About half of a relic. So is Gamba half of a relic? That I'm not sure about. I'd much rather have a relic in this shop. I'm gonna buy the footwork and just the footwork. Why not a remove right now? Same reason, if we want that remove, we can get it here. Um, or we can put that money towards a relic, which could be better. Removing a card right now, especially Strike, actually worsens our matchup against Gremlin Knob as an elite fight, which is a further reason not to do it right now. Because we might need that Strike for these fights. And if I remove a Defend, then we need it for this fight. Guardian doesn't change on Ascension 19. I think it just gets a slightly higher Transform Threshold. Maybe Sharp Hide goes from 3 to 4. Might be more uh, more Thorns, too. Let's 
Excuse you. Right, I'll play fumes. I'll play fumes. Two damage kills, but I don't need it to kill. Let's do this. Stormy Petrol, thanks for the two months of support in the Prime sub. Oh, heck. And I'm one short, huh? Dang it. So close. I'm not using the Shiv Potion here. We'll just take five. But I'm not happy about it. I am happy about an Alchemize. That's a very good card to see on floor four here. For one energy, make a random potion. Alchemize is an obscenely strong card, and uh, in a word, the reason it's obscenely strong, or in a phrase, the reason is it's obscenely strong is because it generates power that you can save from combat to combat. So you can use Alchemize in one combat to make the next combat easier. And that's a very powerful thing in a deck builder slash roguelite like Spire here. Manly man, man. Thanks for the full year of support. Just want to say thanks for keeping it cozy. Well, you're welcome. You keep watching, I'll keep streaming. KVX says, is there any other Ascension levels that are a higher, harder jump than 17, 18, 19? I think Ascension 10, when you get the Ascender's Bane, is one of the hardest, but... I do think the 17, 18, 19 gauntlet is especially, especially challenging. Compared to those jumps, the second boss at Ascension 20 just feels like nothing. Easy peasy. Really want another potion before I go into the elite fights. So let's take another combat here. It's this is going to be a hard pull fight. Could be nasty. Single red slaver is not too, too bad. I do have to be prepared to... I'll take four to get this in play. Block potion's good. I do have to be prepared to take some damage in this fight and or use a potion. Humes does help, though. Oh, we don't get vulnerable, actually. That's good. Next turn, we are Vuln. Looks like we can probably just block. It's gonna be 21. Yeah, we can block that. That might be 21 again. But once again, I can just block it. Let me win. Okay, good fight. Took four damage, got our block potion, and possibly another potion. So we're set up for the elite fight now. Uh, we definitely want a little bit more damage for said elite. We can take a dagger throw or an endless agony. Endless agony gets rid of itself, does eight damage for zero energy. Dagger throw is nine, draws and discards a card. I think I'd rather have the dagger throw. Especially against something like Lagavulin. Going into the elite fight, our best upgrade might be the dagger spray. Helps a lot against sentries, Laga, or Gremlin Knob. Upgrading Fumes is a reasonable candidate, too. I think we want the upgraded Dagger Spray. And then we should be able to take this Elite and this Elite with the Alchemize. So we have four potions, right? I have two in my belt. We can play Alchemize here. We can play Alchemize here. And I have a very high potion chance, so we're likely to get another potion also. So yeah, we have two potions for each of these Elite fights. Which means we should be able to do it. That'll give us enough money for the shop to be good. So yeah, let's do that. Let's upgrade Dagger Spray. Have I ever been in a situation where I've decided not to play Endless Agony to have it multiply through the deck? It's really rare that you want to do that. It can be good in Lagavulin. Um... And there are a couple other situations where it's good, but... Here's the way I look at it, right? You, if you play the Endless Agony immediately, then you spend zero cost, you, you, zero energy in one draw deals four damage, or, well, eight damage. 
one draw for eight damage if you play it immediately. If you choose not to play either of them, then you're losing out on four damage immediately, and then you get an extra four damage later. Or rather, an extra eight damage when you redraw it, because it duplicates. So you get plus four damage per each Endless Agony you let go to the discard pile. So it's about as good as putting a Shiv into your discard pile, which is not very good. Yeah, it's it's you're essentially spending one draw for four damage, which is just not cutting it in most combats, even in Act One. But there can be reasons to do it, like with uh, Dead Branch. Um, to get a better split against Slime Boss, maybe, as Brad Comp notes in Lagavulin, because then you don't want to play it the first time if you don't want to wake up Lega. There's a couple situations. The main uh, reason to cycle Endless Agony for me is to take advantage of Discard. Cards that say draw one, discard one. Normally these decrease the number of cards in your hand, but if Endless Agony self-duplicates and then you discard one of them, then you actually haven't lost a card. So you can use Endless Agony with cards like Dagger Throw, Prepared, and Calculated Gamble to essentially get a little bit more cards in your hand or get more card draw through an indirect means. Ooh, I get to heal 22. We're definitely going right path here. I was a little worried before. Now I'm not worried at all. Storm of Steel. Yeah, if you're getting some benefit from discarding, all the better. And it is Sentry's first, which makes me grateful we took the Dagger Spray. Let's see, this does 18. Dagger Spray, uh, Shiv Potion, Strike, Strike, we deal 30. I can't quite kill any of them. But I do plan on using one or both of these potions here. Great turn for Block Pot. I'll probably use the shift potion next turn or something. We shouldn't be... Shouldn't be cautious with our potions here. Let's just use this now. Get rid of this one. Drink potion for the next elite fight's good. Be goods. Thank you so much for the prime sub and the 14 months. Throw pointy things at the pointy things. Just do it. Do I take three here? I'm gonna go with yes. Play one more attack there. Maybe save ten next turn. Not quite. Mistakes were made. Should have played it here. Had first fumes, yes, but what about second fumes? I like stacking two copies of this card. How many relics that proc on attacks played do you need to take an in infinite blades? One is probably enough. You know, a kunai or an ornamental fan is enough to get started. Whetstone upgrades two attacks. That's pretty good. Um, it's going to be strikes, neutralize, or dagger throw. But in the current position, even those upgrades are pretty good. And we get neutralize upgraded for free here. That's nice. A little bit of extra damage is very helpful here. Fire potion. Nice potions. This should be an easy fight. Not gonna wake up yet. I got three powers in the draw pile. Play them. And one more. Perfect. Yeah, we'll use this. Perfect. 
16 damage strikes. Ram Skull joining the illustrious list of channel cuties. Let me see some waffles in chat, Twitch chat, for a new illustrious cutie. Heck yeah. I'll get you added right away there. All hail. What's a cutie? A cutie is somebody who has spent so long in the channel as to accumulate a half million in channel points and decided to spend it all at once in order to have their name permanently enshrined beneath the stream as a thank you for being such an awesome viewer. That's what the cuties are. Uh, I guess I'll just fire potion and get out of here. Since we have alchemize, we can get our potions back easily. Terror. Double fumes, but terror is still really good as far as damage goes. Now that I have two noxious fumes, is it necessary to upgrade them? Not really. Might upgrade one of them. Probably want dagger spray turn one. Yeah, we want dagger spray turn one. Neutralize turn one's also okay. I'll take the golden idol in exchange for six max health. That'll give us even more money over the course of this run and could pay off big later on. Golden idol is almost always enough money to buy another common relic at minimum. Upgrade footwork now. Have I tried a faith build in Elden Ring? Yeah, I have. Faith slash strength. Oh, look at that dagger spray putting in immense work here. Boom. That's why you bottle it. Do I ever skip Golden Idol? If you boss swap Ectoplasm, you have to... Well, no, you don't have to skip it, but you really, really should skip it. Otherwise, it's almost always worth paying for. Because you can choose one of three different downsides to get the Golden Idol, it, you almost always have one of those three where it's worth it. I think is the simple way to put it. Yeah, it's almost always worth taking. Do I want a Cloak and Dagger? Almost. Why can't you drink the fruit juice off the floor like an animal? Because that's gross, that's why. Maybe just take an Acrobatics for Act 2? That sounds like a good idea. Pick up an acro. You should still be able to. Well, I guess. Okay, this shop seems awesome. This is why you save your money to a shed. The shop right here. Bouncing flask on sale is a definite yes. Backflip is a definite yes. Bag of prep, possibly. Or chemical X. Chemex slaps pretty hard on uh, Silent. There are two rare cards we could see that have X on them. Shackles is a good option, too. Shackle, we could do um, Bouncing Flask, Backflip, Shackles, Card Remove. That's really good as well. Shackles is such a good block card. Oh, I like, especially with the Acro, I really like the Shackles. Yeah, screw the Bag of Prep. Let's go uh, Shackles, Card Remove. Nice shot. And then... Got a lot of good upgrades here. Fumes are okay. Alchemize or Terror for the energy discount. Or, of course, Bouncing Flask for three more poison. Let's go with Bouncing Flask. Make our best poison card even more poisony. Farewell, Bag of Prep, my love. My beloved. Do I just double fumes here? That seems bad. Right, I have to terror to not get murdered next turn. We still might get murdered next turn. Uh-oh. My face? My face. Huh. 
Well, the good news is I have more than 36 health, so I think we just play the Bouncing Flask. And then... Ow? Actually, no. We're not transforming, so we don't get hit next turn. Yeah, that's fine. And if I need more health, I'll just drink the fruit juice. Ark the Pie King, thanks for 300 bits. Got your fourth A20 hard kill last night. After finishing it off with Watcher, well done. Drink this now. Ancient Potion. five more to play this again. Just making the poison number go up is the easiest way to win this fight. Fight is over. BG. Get our bonus money. We're offered bullet time in Venom after image. I guess it's an okay after image. We don't actually have to take any of these. Yeah, skip is an option here. Take the after image. We can get a few zero cost cards. It'd be slightly better if I'd taken that cloak and dagger, but I'll still take it. So I can see it being a little bit more than base block. Go dome or curse key. Hmm. For energy. Especially since I took the after image, the deck definitely wants more energy. I'm gonna take curse key or dome, not astrolabe here which would transform and upgrade three cards. That's not good enough in my book. Yeah, Dome with Shackles, kind of blah, right? We'll take Curse Key. Curse Key says we get a curse upon opening a non-boss chest, which realistically means we miss one relic and we get one curse in exchange for our one energy per turn. And that's not great. But I do think we can manage it. Axe 2 looks like a hot mess. Hmm. Which path to go to? Don't have a lot of money. Well, paths up the left that look okay. This one's decent. We're feeling ambitious. There's this path, but this path is suicide, I feel like. I don't think we can handle that without a preserved insect or something. There's a shop right after the chest here, which is nice. We get the rest site after the elite instead of before the elite. That's a good point, though. We could open the chest if we wanted to. I think I think going left-ish is a good idea. Maybe fighting this elite's probably smart though. With the alchemize, we can get two good potions for the elite. Suicide sounds like more fun and more reward. Well, in a sense, yes. The ancient pot for chosen here. Pick one event along the way. Get wrecked chosen. I'm gonna skip the after image, just go dagger spray here. We want to kill this thing as quickly as we can. Next turn we get attacked for quite a lot. We drew all our good blocks this turn. A bit worrying.
Not great. Only one block. Ouch. Okay, that's nice. Um, Liquid Memories Survivor for a lot of block here. I might do that. Yeah, that would full block. Let's do that. Thank you, Alchemize. Right, two potions to make the chosen fight painless. That's a lot. Do get a well aid plans or a second backflip. Both are very good. Uh, with a dark shackles, I'm taking a well aid plans. Paradox says, one thing I like about this enemy is that uh, about this game is that you can pulverize 95% of the enemies and then get curb stomped and lose due to that one enemy. Yes, yes. Every enemy in this game is a sort of different kind of deck check. And the consequences for failure at any point are very dire. Uh, and I, I think that's what makes this game very interesting and very replayable. I would say a game like this is defined by its enemies. That is to say, all of our ideas about what cards are good or bad are entirely dependent on whether they let you get past the various enemies of the Spire. Uh, and in order for a game to, like this to be interesting, the enemies have to check your deck for different things. There are many different deck builders out there on Steam that you can point to that have very samey enemies or lack of variety in requirements such that you can very easily build one type of deck that just solves everything. And it's very important for Spire to have, you know, not quite hard counters, but enemies that can counter what the player is doing. Time Eater is a really good example of this, of course, um, in order to force varied strategy by the player. And that's why, yes, that's why this game is GOAT indeed. The, the devs were not afraid to give the enemies overpowered abilities that the player has to build or play around. That's essential. Uh, and that's the other, that's something that I would point to in Slice and Dice that they've done very well as well. Slice and Dice is a good roguelite because Hexia exists and the player has to prepare for options that are absolutely unfair. I have way too many unupgraded cards in this deck. Help. Oh, this helps. Yep, this helps. Help is here. The music is great, too. String instruments were a great choice for Spire. They have aged very well. Stoic Holcan, any smilers in chat? Kind of a forced grimace, really. <laughs> Picked up Slice and Dice because of me and I'm loving it. Any chance that I'm creating tutorial content? Ooh, that's a good idea, actually. I could talk about tutorial, like, basic strats in Slice and Dice. I love having poor energy in Act 2. Oh, it makes my life so much easier. Um, I think this is Defend. No Terror? Uh oh, uh, I don't know if I can kill these guys in time. I'm gonna potion here. This helps a bit. Wraith form's not bad either, actually. I'll go with thousand cuts. Both at oh Jesus Christ, that's not good. <laughs> Help! Oh no. Oh no, they both attacked on turn three. For major damage. Terrifying. Guess I'm resting. Thankfully we have Regal Pillow. Ow. 
take 21 on that turn. Yikes. Good news is now they don't get away from us. I think they were going to flee successfully if uh, they didn't do that, so... I'll take the silver lining, I guess. But yikes, that was bad. What is the percent chance of that pattern? That's a 1 in 4. They're each 50-50 to do the attack on turn 2, so... Cumulative probability is 1 in 4. 1 half times 1 half. Oh, I could have taken the Chemex! I'm still buying the Skewer, though. Or not buying, but taking the Skewer. Because it does very good damage. And yeah, we're going to go Green Path. Definitely not Red Path. No way. First, I have to get through the Bird Nerds. Dagger spray. These draws are not it, man. Maybe the deck sucks? Maybe the deck sucks. Seems to be possible. Wow. I'm just gonna die here, apparently. This is really bad. Du duplicate Alchemize there. That's not unreasonable. Can't just full block now. Hmm. Yeah, our, our relics aren't providing combat value. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, we're in really big trouble here. Because I can't kill them now. One Fumes is not putting in enough work. Okay. Go to one. <laughs> Help. Definitely lacking the uh, the front low that we would need for a fight like this. Wow, that's a really bad sign for our elite fights. Terrible. You get an attack potion at least. Upgraded dodge roll with a footwork plus. I guess I'll take. We can't take another fight, so I gotta take an event here. Was, that was not good. Could go to the shop, that way we guaranteed get to a rest site, but then I'm on the wrong path and we're gonna die. So I'll take the event, which is a Sneko fight. Which means I think we're pretty hosed here. Do what I can, though. Can't do much. Uh, heal hook is an energy and a draw. That ain't it. That ain't it. Um, uh, maybe this. No, too late. GG then, Twitch chat. The Sneko does us in. Hmm. Definitely didn't have enough upgrades, but what really went wrong here? Not that many good attacks, definitely. I think two fumes was not it. I think we had too many powers. Yeah, we had five powers, most of them unupgraded. That was definitely part of our problem. We had the draw, but it wasn't enough. No piercing whales. I do wonder if that backflip over the uh, willy plans might have let us stick around a little bit longer. Oh well, GG. Let's try again. That was a short run.
Yeah, it's just a really low output deck in general. Uh, I do think our relics had something to do with it, right? Regal Pillow, Whetstone, Bottled Flame, it really isn't it. Looks like something goes wrong every time we take Dagger Spray. Yes, we take Dagger Spray because something is wrong. Taking Dagger Spray in the first place is already a desperation move. Just very simply true. What went wrong here is that my opening picks were quick slash, quick slash, right? Like, that's not acceptable. Dagger Spray is not a good card early. No, remove the word early. Dagger Spray is not a good card. Doesn't do enough damage for one card to be enough, usually. it's It helps, but it's not good. Easier to point at a problem than at a solution, definitely. Definitely. Would Calc Gamble have allowed us to take all those powers and be okay? Maybe. Maybe. Hey, how's it going, No Sin? Grats on the three streak on Ironclad. 12 damage for one isn't good? No. No, it's not. Why is cleave good but not dagger spray? In a word, strength. In a second word, vulnerable. Ironclad can scale cleave. Silent cannot scale dagger spray. In a third word, bird. <laughs> And Cleave is not that good, true. It, it, does a, it does a decent enough job. I'm much happier with Cleave early than with uh, Dagger Spray early. So I'll say Cleave is good. Cleave is good. But Cleave is good because Ironclad can make it do 30 or more damage. How do I rate All Out Attack to Dagger Spray? All Out Attack is a big upgrade. It's only two more damage than Dagger Spray, but you really notice those two damage. You really notice them. And Sweeping Beam works out because draw one is actually really strong, it turns out. The so Sweeping Beam gets a pass for the draw one. Rip Nader, thanks for the two month, uh, tier two sub, rather, in the 28 months. Did someone say bird? I'll have you know, that's the word. All right, streak back to zero, that's true. Bird is the word. Wondering if this is a rare colorless card start. I don't like trading health away, but I do like rare colorless card. So I'm not sure. I am not sure. Could be a hand agreed. It's that or choose a card or six max. I don't like those options very much. I like losing health against Slime Boss, though. Maybe it's just a 6 max health. Simple but effective. 6 max is simple but effective. Shouldn't Quick Slash also be decent, then, if plus one card is so good? I mean, it would be if the other thing on the card does was any use. But it's, it's just single target damage that's not very good. So sweeping Beam is, is tolerable because of the it does a valuable service in providing area damage and draws one. Quick Slash just hits one enemy and draws one. That's not very good. What's the probability of seeing one of Apotheosis or Hand Agreed with Rare Colorless card? It is 20% to find whichever one you're looking for. 20% for Apotheosis, 20% for Hand Agreed. Therefore, the chance of seeing one or the other is like 0.8. Uh, the chance of seeing neither of them should be 0.8 times 0.8. Something like that. Is Choose a Card as good as a combat? I like that it gets you a leg up on your first combat, so it can save you health immediately, having a, a card in the first fight. 
I'll take this. I'll take this. We don't get Apotheosis or Hand Agreed or Master of Strategy or the Bomb or anything like that. We get Magnetism Mayhem Chrysalis. I'll take a Magnetism, which is not a good start. But uh, we'll see what that does. I guess I can already rule out the path I wanted. Do this instead. Take an extra upgrade. What a garbage, as they say. Will only give you cards you don't want. That's true. Umabi, thanks for the prime sub and the 16 months of support. But I have to beat the Joe Worm. That wasn't too bad. Uh oh. <laughs> Usually not what you want to see. I guess Deflect maybe makes Act 1 a bit easier. Makes it easier to play this Magnetism. Let's try it. Over Backflip. Normally I would take Backflip there. Immediately punished. Damage. I'll take Flying Knee over Sucker Punch. Flying Knee can maybe help us get the Magnetism down. Going Carl Sagan. The Quad Catalyst run yesterday. Quint Catalyst, actually, at the very end. That was a great time. All right, Mr. Serpent. I'll take your deal. Taking the money here right before the shop means we can go to the shop, remove the curse, and buy a relic. That relic is membership card. Good purchase. And I can also buy a backstab. Seems good. Backstab helps us with the whole we're getting killed thing. Still need to make it through the act. Yeah, hence the backstab. Could buy a potion. Fruit juice for 54 is pretty decent, but... Yeah, I'm going to take Backstab. Tactician. Need to upgrade Magnetism soon. Magnetism could potentially generate Hand of Greed in certain fights. There's definitely some incentive. Nice kill, by the way. Definitely some incentive to do that. Do I take the Dagger Spray? I think I've learned my lesson. Wait, we're fighting Slime Boss? No, I really ought to take Dagger Spray. Maybe I won't upgrade it, though. But yeah, we're fighting Slime Boss. We're going to want that. Yeah, that's a hard pool fight, right? No, let's upgrade it right away. Lesson not learned at all. Lesson immediately recreated. Although, can you blame me? I mean, look at this fight, right? Dagger spray. Kill the middle one. Dagger spray, go! Good work, dagger spray. Well laid plans go. Alright, well laid plans was actually part of what went wrong last run, but I'm still going to take it. This run, especially with our member card. Or strike removes. Does having magnetism impact my card pick? I'm not sure what having this magnetism does, but I am going to upgrade it so that I can at least try to play it. Meal ticket's great. Oh, that's really good. That'll heal us in shops, although it doesn't help us this act. If we get to act two, this will help. With membership card, we want to go to more shops, right? Give me a random shop. 
Oh, give me a random heal. Heal 22 should make this a lot better. Okay, okay. Could have had 76 max health by now, but I'd rather just have current health. The shop build. Yeah, if we get to act two, although our odds did just go up. Ooh. I mean, I'm not unhappy. We can buy Ori, letting us choose and add five cards. That seems pretty good. It costs every dollar we have. Or I could buy Doppelganger, which seems questionable. Be the Ori. Lock cards. Die, die, die. That's getting added. Calculated Gamble. That's getting added. Maybe. Double Backstab. Let's do it. Take the backflip, take die, 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 take Gamba. I don't think I take any of these. Does this affect the chances of Apotheosis showing up in future shops? Nope. Nope. Every shop has one rare colorless card. There are 15 of them, so it's just one in 15. Every time. But take that acrobatics. It's not terrible. I don't think I trust acrobatics at this time. Especially not into these fights. That was also part of the problem last run, was that acrobatics. Hello, Gremlin Knob. I have 66 hit points. And a magnetism. What do you have? A blind. Might as well. Show me Hand of Greed. Uh, we always kill next turn. We always kill next turn. Show me Hand of Greed. Good luck. Get a, wow, a ghost in a jar and a bottled lightning. Going better than last run already. We got footwork too. Which we definitely take with deflect and backflip. If only we'd gotten that apotheosis. Uh, bottled gamble maybe? Although with double backstab, it's not actually that good. Could bottled backflip? Bottle backflip. Still no reasonable, still no good reusable damage source. Is magnetism a joke to you? Bottled well aid plans not good. Bottled well aid plans is not a skill. We would need bottled tornado for that. They're all saying yes. Okay, well, fair enough. <laughs> Could upgrade Flying Knee for my best reusable damage. I might want to upgrade Calculated Gamble here. Let's upgrade to actually well laid plans. Summon the Pyramid. We'll be one on the back of one spurned Dagger Spray. It's going to do good work here and good work in Slime Boss, right? Art Vandalay, thanks for the generous Tier 2 sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Perfect block. Forget magnetism. Never play this card. It'll do something in Slime Boss, maybe. Oh, here it is again. All right, do play this card. Maybe I can generate Hand of Greed. Keep blocks now, and we'll wait. 
won't stick around here forever, but because we do get double money, it's really worth it to try to get uh, Hand of Greed. Excited for Spire 2? You betcha. Yeah, you betcha. Greed of Hand. Didn't think Hand of Greed could be generated? It can be, mysteriously. Why it can be generated is a good question. But yeah, it can be generated. Can't make a bandage up, thankfully. Otherwise, we'd really be here for a long time. That button's good, actually. Hand agreed common? No, it's a rare. Colorless rare. Mind blasts. There it is. Okay. Um can maybe make Apotheosis now, although I'm not going to wait too long for that. Oh, there. Okay, well, I don't have to. Sweet. So there we go. 25 gold for the, for waiting there, which is 50 gold. That's well worth it. Thanks for the money, hee hee. Do we take a Malaise or a Crippling Cloud? These don't help me against Slime Boss. These don't help me at all. I guess I'll take a malaise, but yeah, it's not so helpful. I guess I upgrade footwork? All right. We have a strength potion, which I'm definitely using. This is going to be a hard fight. We could also upgrade Calc Gamble. Actually, no, let's upgrade this because slimes are a thing. Now I have to do that in every combat? Yeah, we have to get 100 gold from Slime Boss. Hope you're all ready to a shit. <laughs> this could be a while. <laughs> Pretty good turn one. Three minus fifteen, eighty-three, seventy-eight. Okay, promising. At the ghost, if I really need it. Uh... Hmm. I do get a better split if I play Welly Plans, Magnetism, Malaise, tank the hit. Next turn, triple strike. Keep the dagger spray. Dagger spray on the following turn. I have enough health, I don't need to use the ghost to do that. But will happen regardless with thorns? Yes, but it happens after the slime boss acts. So the slime boss takes three damage back and then they're splitting next turn. They don't split immediately. I'll show you. We take 27, they take 3, now they're splitting. We can do strike, 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 keep dagger spray, keep discovery. Play discovery? No, don't play discovery yet, just do this. Keep discovery strike. Monka. Secret weapon here. Let's just get uh, Flying Knee. I 
think I keep Discovery for one more turn. We can split them both here, but then it's getting really spooky. Getting really spooky. We'll do that. They'll have Ghost. Just discover a Dagger Spray. Easy. Okay, that's not that bad. What do you got? Adrenaline, huh? All right. Gamble's here. Are you first. Go to strike, strike, survivor. Okay, one down, one down. We're weakened, though. Weakened in frails. We're all attacking. That's not good. Really not good. Horrible. All right. Incoming damage is 34. Strikes only deal six. I cannot kill any of them. Uh, if I double defend here, we go to 15 plus 21 is 36. We go to two health. I'd really prefer to keep the ghost. Just double check that, right? 16... Uh, 36 versus 34. Yeah, we live on two. We live on two. They all take three. They're no longer weakened. So if we draw a dagger spray, it's over. Son of a gun. All right, well, we can use the ghost now. Is there any way out of this situation that doesn't involve the ghost? I think only Discovery, right? Discover a glass knife. Wait a minute. Is that good enough? No, because you go to six with Neutralize. Actually, neutralize, strike, and kill one. Last knife kills you, and then I can defend, deflect? Yes, there we go. Okay, we save the ghost, I believe. This. Yeah, there we go. Ghost preserved. Now the apotheosis shows up. Get out of here, apotheosis. Was close. Alchemize, Phantasmal Burst. Probably Alchemize again. It feels like a better deck into Act 2 than last time. We have Double Backstab. We have two AoE cards. We have Malaise. And we have a little bit less Junk. We don't have two Fumes that were really hurting us last time. Alchemize with Ghost. Actually not that good, right? Still taking it. And we get Choker Ecto Sneko. Well, it's not Ectoplasm. Uh, not a very good Sneko deck either. What's the 30% potion in the UI? That is a mod called Info Mod, which shows you some sort of behind the scenes percentage chances an informational display mod. Uh, the only things info mod shows are things you could calculate yourself if you knew the game mechanics. Isn't Choker horrible with all the zero one-offs and zero-offs? Yeah, so is Sneko though, right? <laughs> hmm. often play more than six cards per turn currently, but yeah, we definitely have some turns where we'd want to. I guess I'll put my faith in Snack. Yeah, I, I don't I don't believe in skipping boss relics, and I certainly don't want to try to do that there. So we'll put our faith in Snack here. And uh, just see what happens. 
Things could turn around quick, or they could get gnarly. We'll see. All depends on what Sneko's uh, random costs decide. I want so. If I choose violence, I draw the attacks on the draw pile. Let's do that, actually. Okay. Random BS, go! Hopefully that's not my best block next turn. So I'm not so afraid of using the ghost with the alchemize in the deck. Take one here, that's not bad. Give potions good. Do that too, keep these. Just a nine by two, all right. I can secret technique for a zero cost defend. Do that. Malays for three. Keep da 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 gamble. Good fight, actually. Try. To get a hand agreed here. Get a few chances at it. Alright, no hand agreed for us. Find an entropic brew and a catalyst plus. It's a very speculative catalyst, however, it's already upgraded. I'm going to take that, because this deck desperately wants a Bouncing Flask or Crippling Cloud or Corpse Explosion anyway. Huro! Welcome with the Raiders. That's right, we have Alchemized Magnetism. There is, uh, there's planning we could do, although, honestly, most of the plan things you could do are shut down by Bronze Scales. If you were going... Mega Gigabrain and wanted a six hour run, you could have skipped the bronze scales to open up uh, magnetism stalling. But uh, yeah, dear God, please no, basically. No, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, if, if I was really dedicated, we could have skipped the bronze scales on the reasoning of magnetism, which is quite a choice. I'm not picking up that entropic brew. Let me go to the shop and get my 15 health, thank you. And I guess I'll overpay for a remove. We get to remove two strikes doing this. I'll do that. If we were on a 19 streak, I would have had to at least really think about it. We've had first magnetism, yes. But what about Sling of Courage here? Make our attacks do a bit more damage to elites? How many elites do I want to fight? Go three elites here. There's two different ways to go with three elites. I'm gonna buy this. Two strength and elite fights for just a bit more oomph in those combats. Turns this potion into 24 damage as well. Although I'm probably gonna use it in one of these fights. Should be able to at least do this, right? What about this? Probably need the ghost for this. Bird nerds, get bronze scaled. Yeah, shift potion right now. Tool's okay with Sneko too, right? Not terrible. Actually, leaving them up was more damage. <laughs> Whoops. I'm just buying time to fish for hand agree, don't worry. No. 
right, whatever. Not good enough, I don't think. All part of the plan, that's right. All part of the plan. Fight's gonna be trouble. Fight is definitely gonna be trouble. Defend strike. Defend strike. Uh, I also owe the chat a dad joke, I see. Or Twitch chat. Heck. This is a bad... Not getting die to die here. It's just defend, deflect, malaise on chosen, huh? Take a bunch. Uh, we still have alchemize. Oh yeah, let's use this then. Save three. Still hurts a bit. Still a bunch of days in the draw pile, so next turn could be bad if we get uh, Voln. We don't, thankfully. Terrible, I say. So I'm taking two. Secret weapon, not secret technique. It just fetches zero cost strike then, right? Jam Scampy, thanks for the 10 months of support. Alright, an oldie but a goodie for the Twitch chat here. What do you call it when a cat comes in first place at a dog show? Catastrophe. No refunds. <laughs> I couldn't disagree with the that's a goodie sentiment. You know, fair enough. It's not going so well. Almost like the deck has no damage. Almost. Twenty one by two. <laughs> Shoot. All right. Good knowing you, Ghost in a Jar. I didn't draw any damage because I don't have any damage. Great. Oh wait, wait. Oh, Alchemize just saved me. All right, we're out of here. Woo! Spicy. Give me a piercing well. Damage found. Alright, got Flex Potion, Ghost and Jar, Sling of Courage for the Elite. What am I upgrading here? Footwork? Footwork? 
Gotta be footwork, surely. None of the other upgrades matter that much. We could upgrade Die Die Die, maybe. Actually, the Die 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 upgrade seems smart. Yeah, let's upgrade Die Die Die. Doomed? We're not doomed. Well, that's not good. <laughs> okay, maybe we're doomed. The Zeknar pattern, huh? Bummer. Very expensive cards, too. Shoot. Yeah, we might be doomed here. Uh, these cards are too expensive. Oh, boy. Give me malaise, eh? Thank you, I guess. Let's see, minus two goes to five, goes to three. Minus four goes to four, goes to three. Or minus three goes to four, goes to three. So let's go defend malaise for two. Let's get rid of this card since it does nothing currently. He footwork backstab, I guess. Definitely the worst of the three elites for us, I'm pretty sure. I can't afford anything. Stecko, you needed to play nicer than this. Can't even keep these, they're too expensive. Ghost here. Please no. Can't afford to do that. This will magnetism gamble and then ghost. Yeah. We're toast here. We got piercing whale at least. So we got one more turn. But that's it. One more turn here. Ghost into Toast. Oh, actually, wait. Is that lucky? I think that was random. We rolled 22 again instead of uh, the multi-attack. That saves me, actually. This is not a time six. I can secret weapon for hand agreed again. We're there. We, get, we even get money. Okay, cool, cool. Cool, we live. Woof. We can get 10 more health in addition to the rest. Hey, we're not dead. <laughs> Thankfully, we found a poison card to go with our catalyst. Bad news, though. It's just another catalyst. So I cannot take it. I'm not going to take an outmaneuver. Maybe instead of going for the burning elite, we should go this way. That seems less suicidal, right? Get a heal, then fight this elite. I like that idea. I can rest as well, because the next regular fight could also do me in. So, we'll snooze. Which is not the same as losing. Snoozing is not losing. Not here. Snoozing is winning. Even more healing via Eternal Feather. I wish that had come one floor earlier, but I'll still take it. Now we have lots of health. Okay, things are looking up. And we have another ghost in a jar. Things are looking up! Exclamation point. Excellent news. This fight is stallable, even with the thorns. Although, it doesn't mean I want to, mind you. It's a bad turn. Might get attacked by both of them here. Just one, thankfully. Just one. If I could roll something that's not three cost, that'd be great. Huh. 
Damn it. Oh, we're in such trouble here. Could have been worse. Get rid of that. Lock frail. Freaking 22. Oh boy. Dutch garbage. I wonder what cost so far. <laughs> Apparently good. Nice. Alright, I'll just panic button. really bad. Classic Sneko moment in Act 2, of course, but it's definitely tough. Yeah, I think we gotta use our ghost here. It feels really bad that we have to use that one, too. Have to get out of this fight, though. These metamorphoses are really terrible. We will eat plans, finally. Thank goodness. Well, strength now. that much damage. <laughs> Help! I just cannot do any damage. Oh boy. I'm really gonna die to these two? How embarrassing. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Not so bad. Finally a decent turn. Okay, I think we have escaped the fight. Terrifying. The enemy's turn to stall on us. Oh, but but secretly, I was actually just waiting for Hanagree. That's the secret. Is that I was actually just farming them. Fooled you all. Into thinking I was dying here, but no, we're, we're, we're making money. Easy peasy. Run is dumb. Don't bother. bother. Need a predator so bad. We need a bullet time so bad. Let me out of here. Thanks for the money, uh, he he. You know, I was just thinking about that outmaneuver we saw. If it was upgraded, it would be actually worth it. It goes nicely with malaise, helps even out our costs. I will take an outmaneuver plus. Next turn, gain three additional energy. I'll also take a heal here. 15 healing. Whoops. That's not what I meant to buy. Oh, well. It wasn't very expensive. That's fine. Uh, bomb is actually pretty good. So is Toolbox. 
could save and quit to, to undo that, but I won't. What's the average Sneko discount? Apparently it has been discounting cards. We've rolled more zero and one cost than two and three cost, although it really doesn't feel like it. I am going to buy the bomb. The card's actually quite good. <laughs> and we're going to upgrade the bomb. 50 damage. What about strike remove? Would have been nice if I hadn't bought the dagger throw. But bomb is our ultimate uh, AoE answer here. I hope so. Back foot first. No. It's fine. Will I play Spire 2 even if it doesn't have the bomb? I don't know. That's a bit of a big ask, don't you think? Does not kill you, huh? Hmm. Still worth playing. Let's leave this. I want to be able to draw that again. Versus. Let's go strike. Always. Wizards attacking next turn. Tempting to play the bomb here, but no, we should play Da Da Die. We have to kill the wizard right now. Hopefully, Dagger Spray shows up right now. Thank you. Okay, that buys me some much needed time. Still no powers in play, though. Did I? Uh oh. Already used dark shackles. I already used dark shackles. Oh boy. A big attack. I think it's got to be something like, you know, kill this one. Can't play a maneuver then? No, that's not good. Garbage. Ah. Wheat death, come to me. Then, of course, it's all two cost. Damn it. This was such a good fight. If I was able to play the bomb one time, I was not able to play the bomb one time. Bomber. Anything I can do now? We can neutralize and maybe not die. I think we still die, right? It's only 75 damage. Gamble. There's no, there's no line in hand that saves our life, right? Neutralize brings this to 14 by 3. Let me double check that. 19 times 0.75. Yeah, 14. So 14 by 3 plus 15 is 57. We're exactly dead if I play Neutralize. So we have to gamble. If only we had our ghost. Let's 
It's not enough. GG. This miserable run ends here and now. Yeah, it was definitely not a good Sneko Eye. But uh, it's not like we had any good boss relic options. GG. GG. This was really close. I think if we were able to get to Collector, we were going to get out of Act 2 here and potentially win the whole run. Think the run was doomed with Magnetism from Niao? Yes, this was a really good example of why you don't trade 18 health for a rare colorless card. Or trade health for a starting bonus ever. GG. Choker just dies later? Quite probably. Choker would have gotten out of Act 2, easy peasy. Yeah, Choker would have been fine through Act 2. But I think Choker dies later in the run. But sometimes I think that's the right play, right? Pick whatever gets you through the current act, and then build a plan for the next act. What about Ecto? <laughs> Don't take Ecto with membership card. Don't do it. How much do I think the speculative catalyst hurt? Very little. Catalyst was not our problem there. How do I feel about Silent versus Ironclad for streaking now? I, I knew Silent was going to be tough. And we're also very rusty at Silent. I wouldn't say I'm playing particularly well right now. So we're just getting our, uh, our sea legs back, so to speak. Would I consider doing a number of boss relic swaps on Silent? Nope. Nope, I've done that plenty of times and I do not enjoy it. Even if it's numerically close or slightly better win rate, I find it less fun to play silent with uh, boss swaps, so I'm not going to do it. Just a miserable time. The dagger throw purchase killed us? It might have, actually. Yeah, it might have. If we'd removed a strike instead. I know, bomb being three cost killed us in the Trump leader fight. Won't Watcher Streaking be too boring? I don't think it'll take that long, to be honest. So I, I, we won't be spending three months on Watcher, just spoilers. <laughs> like we have for uh, Ironclad and potentially Silent. Today is not a good day for Dagger Spray. All right, I'm not going to take Dagger Spray this time, but I am going to take a short break here at Twist Chat, refill the legs, stretch the water, all that jazz. When I return, we're going to play some more Silent. BRB. What is a good day for Tiger Spray, really? Akabeko, bottled. You know, you, you get Akabeko, bag of marbles, bottled flame. It can actually be pretty good, right? That'll be 30 damage twice to all enemies. That's good. That's really good. All right, BRB, everybody.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Thanks for waiting. You know, just <clears throat> despite our losses, I'm not too discouraged here. I am enjoying the process of the silent. Looking forward to some runs where we get maybe some slightly better early damage options than what we've gotten so far. But I do think I've learned my lesson about some of the starting bonuses. Rare colorless card, not reliable, nor is transform. Choose a rare card, though. That actually does seem pretty good for silence. There are a lot of good silent rares. Including some juicy attacks we could use to slay a bunch of elites, Act 1. Also, far left here. This is a bit weird. Three events, though. Synchronized snacks. I like that. I don't love paying 99 gold for a rare card, but I do love a rare card. What do we got here? Die, die, die is pretty good. We could also take Phantasmal Killer and try to build around it. I think the die, die, die is nice and no nonsense. We are fighting Guardian at the end of the act. Yeah, just give me a die to die. <clears throat> How's it going, Goofy? Welcome, welcome. Your defect is at Ascension 15 right now, while the other characters are at Ascension 4 or 5. Should you get defect to A20 and then keep going with the others, or start getting wins on other characters and then come back to the defect? So here's my take on it. It's kind of twofold. Um, all four characters are kind of like different skill sets. You you do get some lessons that apply across them, like learning enemy patterns and understanding draw probabilities. But uh, evaluating all the cards and figuring out how to pick your relics and take a path, it's a different thing with each character. So I think you can find more success by focusing on one character at a time. That's exactly what I'm doing here. That said... Ultimately, the best way to get better at this game is to play it in a way that you find entertaining, because that's what will keep you to cause. Uh, that's what will cause you to keep coming back to it and keep thinking about it. Is if you're enjoying your interactions with the game. So what you should actually do is whatever you find the most fun. If you're bored of defect, try a different character, see how it feels. If you want to keep playing the same character and you're really invested, then play robot all the time because it's very fun. Um, but but follow follow your heart, so to speak. Do do what you find entertaining, and the more you come back to the game and keep playing, the better you will get at it. Even if you're not, um, even if you're not spending every moment thinking about how to get better at the game, simply coming back to it and putting in more time will make you better at it. And there are, there are many players out here in, in the Spire community who decide that they only want to play one character. Um, I've put more than 7,000 hours into this game at this point, and I still like it. So even if you play only one character, you can probably do 1,000 hours or more of Slay the Spire. Very replayable game. It's absurd. Let's take that die-to-die. -die. I do think Phantasmal's an acceptable start, too, but I like the die-to-die -die here. Uh, and I guess we're going to go this way. We could delay the fire here if we wanted to, if we don't have a good upgrade. But I feel like Dada is a good enough upgrade, so I really doubt it. Let's go this way. Oh, Jawworm. What will our fate be today? Still going to take the one here. But I think the Dada makes this fight quite a bit easier. And that's one of the things I do like about taking a card from Niao. Let's double defend here. Uh, is that you... You can often save health right away in your first few fights for having an extra card. Almost anything that isn't a strike or defend will help you out in these combats. Good first potion. Do we go Cloak and Dagger or Sneaky Strike? I'm down for a Sneaky Strike. Gives us a good reason to take an acrobatics or a prepared or a dagger throw. 
and does decent reusable damage. That was part of the problem with the last run, was we had decent damage on turn one with die, 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 double backstab, but then we had nothing that actually stuck around that we could use more than once. Sneaky Strike, you can use more than once. Have I learned my lesson about the random upgrade too? I don't think that I have, because damage upgrades are great for these upcoming elites. Block upgrades are great for the Guardian. And I've got enough non-starter cards already that I think the odds are good here. So I'll take the trade once again. Get two strikes upgraded, and I'm happy with that. Because that will also help in the next couple fights. Potentially. Yeah. For example, we can just kill here because of this strike plus. Three underwhelming damage options. I don't totally dislike Caltrops with Guardian as the act boss. Really good at the very end of the game, too. With Sneaky Strike, Firepot, and Die, 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 could we maybe take on the Burning Elite here? I don't think so. I don't think we're that strong. We're definitely not max health Kremlinov strong here. Not at all. We would need also a Fear Potion and to take the Slice or something. If this was a non-Burning Elite, we could try to take it. But because it's Burning, we would need two Potions and probably more hit points. Mostly can't decide on Caltrops or Skip. I think I'd rather Skip. Like, don't expect the Caltrops to be good in the short term. And there's no reason to take them now for the long term. Especially with, with, with us having traded some health already. So let's go with no. And let's, yes, take another combat here. Need a dice with that slice. Hmm. Tough roll on these two. I guess we go die to die, strike, survivor, take four. But where are all the poison stabs? I also owe the chat a dad joke for pectoral. What does the silent do when she's sad? Cry, cry, cry. No refunds to a shot. What does the audience do? Sigh, sigh, sigh. Okay, well, prepared is cool with sneaky strike, but dash is dash. Two cost, do 20 thing, which is very good against Act 1 elites. Has some additional advantages. Uh, it's a block card that works against Gremlin Knob. And the 10 block is a perfect full block against a single sentry's attack. So for these reasons, dash is really, really good uh, as an Act 1 elite answer card for silence. It just has a, a really useful niche. And I think it's pretty decent later on, too. One of my favorite things that dash can do later on is if you get Necronomicon in Act 2, which is very unlikely, uh, it becomes a really good block card, too. And here's an example of Dash being immediately pretty good. So we can uh, hit the Lice that's buffing, the Louse rather that's buffing, and still block this turn. Ooh, I was hoping I would get Die Die Die. This is actually just as good though. Because we can use Sneaky Strike to kill this one. We full block the middle one. Kill you, strike you. Great fight. Probably just skip these. Shame to see Catalyst when you don't want it, but oh well. Currently thinking we just upgrade uh, Die 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 going into the next fight. Have that for our uh, next couple elites. Yeah, speculative Catalyst into two elites immediately. Great choice. <laughs> 
No, I think we just skip these. We could maybe take Quick Slash, but I never really like taking that card. When is Expertise ever a pick? Expertise can be a very powerful card. It's actually secretly Silence's second best card draw card. First best being Calc Gamble. Uh, you draw cards until you have six or upgraded seven in your hand. That's after you play it. So this can potentially draw six or seven cards for one energy. But only if you can get your hand to be empty. So Expertise is good if you can get your hand to be empty and you have energy. Works really good with Concentrate for that reason. Uh, or anytime you just have a ton of energy and slash or a ton of discard, it becomes pretty good. Good with Ice Cream, too. I like that. Less good with Pyramid, less good with Dead Branch, oddly less good with well Aid Plans, even. Good with Tools the Trade. Yeah, late game draw, usually. Although I've had it be, be good early. Um, one of my favorite silent runs of all time, I think, was first pick Flechette's, second pick Expertise. And that was really good. It was really good. Oh, that die, die, die upgrade, though. Letting us kill the louse here. Very good. Ooh. Footwork already seems good with Dash and uh, Guardian is the act boss. You could maybe make an argument for backflip first, but it seems to me really hard to skip that first footwork that you see. Such a good card. Chat loves feet. A decent open just in terms of raw damage. Do I want to wait for footwork? Slash cycle the neutralize back in. Kind of. Don't like missing our damage though. We should also lose the Ascender's Bane. I'm going to wait here. <laughs> okay, maybe we wake up now. Don't have any choice as to what I play next turn. Might as well actually have it full block, right? The perfect hand doesn't exist, they said. Or does it? Alright, this time we gotta play the Strike Plus. This is definitely a damage race. The one we are well behind on at the moment. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, this might be a short run. Eleven or ten. Could be guaranteed dead without the fire pot. With it, we have a chance here. Don't have enough damage though. Gotta do twenty-five more. We can do twenty-five more. Two turns, we can do it. Right? So be eight plus five. That's exactly enough. Wow. And that is why you take the upgrade too at random. Without that strike upgrade, we're dead. Get a meal ticket and a poison potion. And I think we need a dagger throw to make this sneaky strike do more work. Backflip's not bad either, though. That said, with how badly the fight went, I think the second elite is off the table. We didn't even fight Gremlinov, right? 
should get to this rest site. So let's go. Actually, we can go to this one. That's closer. Yeah, that's a better idea. Have I played Rogue Book? Yes, I played quite a bit of Rogue Book. I liked Rogue Book a lot. Um, Rogue Book is a little bit unbalanced in that um, not all the characters are made equal in that game. And on the higher difficulties, the game just kind of throws raw damage at you in a kind of unacceptable way. But uh, And the other problem with Rogue Book is that it's a little bit glitchy. Not perfectly well put together under the hood, which means it does have some performance and mechanical issues. Um, but if you can put those aside, there's a, a really well done deck builder with a, a really unique map exploration style that is uh, a really good time. What's the difference between A20 and A20 Heart? Yeah, I, I put H in the title just to clarify that we're fighting the hearts uh, in addition to doing A20. Not everyone who's fighting the heart will specify A20H, but I'm just being clear that we are indeed going for heart kills each and every time we play. Have I tried Estrella? Yeah, I... I enjoyed my time with Estrella. Them what? Wish I liked the way it looked a bit more. Okay, White Bee Statue is going to be good if we survive more than one floor. We'll see how this fight goes. Medium Acid Slime is definitely tough, but this turn one looks good. I see Dagger Throw, Sneaky Strike, Dash. We can deal 30 damage. No, uh, 31 damage, which sets up a really good split. Take only two here. Oh, it takes zero, actually. Even better. Although now I would split it by playing dash, right? That three damage actually matters? Hmm. Well, I definitely don't want to uh, do that, so I'll double defend. Nine. So I can kill one of them and survivor, we should be good. It's hm. a rude draw. Oh well, take two. Two is fine. Keep the potion. We we're probably getting to the fire now. Oh, we get a fairy in a bottle. Now that's the best news of all. Now we don't need to rest. We can instead upgrade it. Excellent. Excellent. All right, we don't need no stinky dagger spray because we have a die to die, and it's way better. Not even the wheel of stabbing can kill me. Game is pure magic in terms of replay play value. Big agree, Dark Lord of Gulp. Big agree. Crazy game. Although for me, I'm the type who really already enjoyed finding a game that I really like and then playing it over and over again. So I had many, many other games that I've reached the thousand hour mark with. But uh, Spire took it to a whole new level for a single player game. You're a fumes clicker here? I'm thinking about it, but I don't I don't think that's the direction we're going. Oh, wow. The healing. All right, this is going really well. Hurts to lose those relics. Uh, probably just remove a card, actually. Let me just remove a card. What other games have I played a lot of? Let's see. Quick thinking. Uh, in terms of games I've played more than a thousand hours of. 
Um, I've played lots of uh, the old MMO City of Heroes, Diablo 2, Diablo 3. I don't think I got to a thousand hours in D3. Um, Path of Exile, the Civilization series. XCOM, XCOM, uh, lo XCOM Enemy Within with the Long War mod, specifically. Long War 1. I'm sure I'm missing a few. Uh, the Souls games. If you, if you put all the Souls games together, I'm over a thousand, I'm sure but not any particular one. I put a tremendous amount of hours into uh, Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim combined as well. My highest drop runes in D2, what a great question. <laughs> I might have seen a Vex. I don't know if I ever actually did. I didn't see anything super, super, super high, I don't believe. Well, I'm realizing I don't remember the ordering of them so much these days. It's been a long time. Did I hear the City of Heroes fan-supported server got official permission? That's pretty cool. I did play on the fan server when it was when it when the news broke that uh, fan servers existed for for City of Heroes. I did get back into the game for a little bit. That was quite fun. Did I ever see a vagrant in Souls One? Yes, I have seen a vagrant. It surprised me. Do X cost cards work with Mayhem? It works amazingly, Rod Legru. The X cost card will play for X equal to your current energy, but you won't lose any energy. So it's it's good. Gonna play the Elden Ring DLC on stream? Yes. Yes. Yeah, vagrants are the little see-through crabby-looking guys. The community figured out that vagrants are created through uh, a very esoteric multiplayer mechanic. Basically, when you drop an item on the ground in your game, you have to leave an item on the ground um, and then not pick it up. Then the game creates like phantom versions of those items on the ground in other players' multiplayer player games of Dark Souls. Um, if they don't touch them, then they'll propagate into other players' worlds, eventually becoming a vagrant creature. So it has to be spawned in another player's world, and they don't pick up the items on the ground repeatedly to create a vagrant. It's a very bizarre mechanic. But totally on par for FromSoft, like most average FromSoft mechanic, I guess. They love esoteric nonsense. What's the highest amount of mayhem stacks I've ever had? <laughs> I've definitely done mayhem 10 or something, something nonsensical like that. Only real ones know about BTD6. Okay, well, all right, I'll I'll admit. How, what was my current BTD6 playtime? Steam says 182 hours. So I'm I'm well well short of a thousand, thankfully. But yeah, I've I've played 200 hours of Bloons TD6. It's good good game. A very addicting game. Goaded with the sauce, yeah. I'd love to be able to know how much uh, Bloons TD 2 and 3 I played, because I definitely played some of the OG Flash games.
I'm trying to decide if we go for a combat or an event now. I've already got some good events. Combat's another potion guaranteed. Yeah, Balloons TD is the one with the cute monkeys that are popping balloons. How many hours of Into the Breach? Probably only about 100. What's my Into the Breach? Wait, is that my favorites? Oh, there it is. Uh, 116, yeah, just just over 100. Hope I'll play potato co-op with my new best friend, Papa. It's only local co-op, so Papa would have to find his way to me or me to him to make that happen. The IRL meetup. Not completely out of the question, mind you, but... Definitely a barrier to entry. I'll take the fight for the money. Uh, we get to upgrade card because Fairy in a Bottle and Meal Ticket just bailed us out. Have I played Tome? No, I've not, uh, not played Tales of Magial. I haven't, haven't taken a good look at No Rest for the Wicked. It does keep getting recommended, so I could see it happening. Also, Al. Okay, not so bad. I do have to use the potion, though, which is fine because of White Beast. Bada bing, thanks to the Prime sub in the three months. Block pod's good. Bouncing Flask or Catalyst or Masterful Stab. I am down for a Bouncing Flask. Good way to beat Guardian. And allows us to take something like a Catalyst later. We're not seeing uh, a whole lot of draw discard stuff, so getting some poisons, not a bad idea. Good upgrade here, too. Any RPG I enjoy, especially JRPGs? I'm more of a Western RPG kind of guy. I really, really enjoyed... Um, all of the D&D adaptations into computer games. Uh, I've replayed in particular uh, the Infinity Engine games made by Bioware, Baldur's Gate 2, Icewind Dale are uh, fantastic old RPGs. I enjoyed Neverwinter Nights quite a bit, although that was more for the online community. I don't think the campaign of Neverwinter Nights aged very well. Um, shout out to Temple of Elemental Evil for being a really good adaptation of D&D that was very janky at times, but really well done uh, by Troika, a now defunct RPG studio that made some great RPGs, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines and Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. That's another really good RPG, Arcanum. Uh, very old, also very janky, but a great great game. Uh, all the stuff that Larian Studios has, has made, uh, the, the first game they made that I really enjoyed was Divinity 2 Ego Draconis, but they've since, of course, made Divinity Original Sin, Divinity Original Sin 2, and Baldur's Gate 3, of course, which everyone on the planet now knows about. Is Disco Elysium an RPG? I don't personally consider Disco Elysium to be a game. But it's a good piece of software. Whatever whatever Disco Elysium is, it's quite good. But it, it for me, doesn't actually meet the definition of game because it has no gameplay. Um, you've got dice rolls that are used for succeeding or failing checks. But because the game also um, kind of inverts expectations and a good outcome isn't related to success and a bad outcome isn't related to failure, The you don't actually have like a, a, a real pass-fail system at all, uh, and therefore you're not actually doing anything really. 
it is it is all kind of a choose your own adventure novel narrative picks uh, which are quite fun although I, I really wish that they had gone a bit further with it because you actually can't change any of the major story beats of Disco Elysium, which I was quite upset to find, a, find out. But it is still a fantastic piece of software slash narrative experience and, and world building. Really, really well done world building in Disco Elysium. The journey being greater than the destination, definitely. Yes, definitely. Yeah, okay, so the story kind of plays out in the same way each time. You can, you've got different stats that you can use for checks for success failure, which mostly changes what words you hear along the way. In very entertaining ways, admittedly, very entertaining ways. The knob's also listening. We're having a chat. This knob's getting bouncing flasked, that's for sure. Do I footwork here? I might, actually. I think I'm going to. I have not played Prey 2017. Not say I've done that. Let's find out if we get the sneaky strike. Ooh. Okay, we can Sneaky Strike next turn with the footwork, actually. This is good. Let's just block then. Next turn, block potion. Take two. And I think we're through here. Ooh, not if I draw that. Well, that's what the fairy's for, right? That was a real shame. We couldn't play the Dida Die because we drew all the damage on one turn. So we're missing the kill here. Thirty-seven's too much. I cannot block anymore. All right. Well, nice knowing you, fairy. We're still good. How could we not be with a tiny chest? We take a poison stab to stack more poison, or we can just take an adrenaline. Hard to say no to adrenaline, right? Pretty hard to say no to adrenaline. Although, do we get slapped on turn two? Sometimes. I think adrenaline does help not getting slapped on turn two. Might be safer to rest now that we... Don't have the thing, but I'm going to try to upgrade a Bouncing Flask here for our boss fight. We'll see if we can do this on 19 health. As long as we don't get hit on turn two, I think we're fine. We do have this colorless potion that can potentially help. We got turn one Bouncing Flask, so I think we're good. Uh, but we shouldn't make the mistake of playing Footwork. We need to play the Strike. For a bit more damage here. Okay, we're good. Don't even need to adrenaline here. I think I will. It's got blocked. There's no point in playing any cards here. I could play the die 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 just to get rid of it, but I think it's actually decent, so let's not do that. Really good draw. Take three, get the Bouncing Flask down. Still no need to potion. We could consider potioning. Don't need to, though. Take seven. Go to nine. Nine is okay.
20 damage to transform, so we do strike, strike plus, then da 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 at the very end. Bit of dagger throat, but then I discard the defense. Hmm. It's not good. Okay, not bad. I was worried we wouldn't have any block on this turn. But we're okay. Think we kill next turn? I hope so. Thirty-one minus sixteen is fifteen. Just have to do fifteen damage. Easy peasy. Cool. We are not dead. We keep both potions. We can add a wraith form if we want to, which I'm strongly considering. Or phantasmal killer is back. As a way to scale our damage. Finally, we're out of Act 1. Look, Life as a Silent is hard, okay? It's also Grand Finale. For Grand Finale to work, I recommend two things. Lots of different kinds of card draw. And Retain. We have neither. A little bit of card draw, but not enough. I'll take a Wraith Worm. Bad joke for me, after spending too much time in Papa's stream, why is Amid the best relic in Spire? Because it has no peer. I like that. Peerless joke. So, boss relic with a yikes downside, boss relic with a yikes downside, or boss relic with a somewhat yikes downside. I actually quite like Slaver's Collar with White Beast Statue, actually. This gives us the extra energy we need in boss and elite fights. And for the non-boss fights, we can use one potion per combat to make up the difference. So I rather like Slaver's Collar rather than trying to play around the downside of one of these two. Uh, that does mean we're going to want more energy going into Act 3. We'd like to find uh, Fusion Hammer or Coffee Dripper would be good. We could maybe consider Hovering Kite. Why is there a cannibalism tag for Twitch streams? Sounds like RimWorld stuff. Plenty enough games where <laughs> that ends up happening. Master Zed of Nowhere, thanks for 21 months of support. Introduce... You're welcome for introducing you to Against the Storm. That's a great time. Very excited for Against the Storm DLC coming. Eventually. Hmm. I can do at least two elites this act. Actually, this path looks pretty safe. We stay out of the hard pool fights as for as long as possible. We get two tiny chest ch charges. Then we get a chest early in Act 3. Um, we heal 15 here. We upgrade Wraith Form here. So we have probably close to full health and an upgraded Wraith Form for the elites. That should be pretty good. Would do three poison. It's not good enough though. Hmm. Um. Probably just actually do pot bouncing flask. Right. We just win the fight if I do that. Let's do that. Take a Piercing Whale. Get another defensive option. It's not like our offensive options are that good, though. Yeah, we'll take a Piercing Whale. If there was an option to start with a rare card of another class, what sort of downside would you be willing to accept 
to try the card. Hmm. Man, a rare card from another class seems like it could be really strong on anyone who's not Watcher, right? Free Mayhem? Free Mayhem sounds hilarious. And I'm going to Wraith Form here, because these two are pretty nasty otherwise. And on turn three, they're probably leaving or whatever. I don't want them to leave with my money, though. I'm going to a shop very soon. Let's hit the Mugger first. There's no rare Watcher cards that enter Wrath or Calm. That's right. Only Divinity. Only Divinity. So Blasphemy is quite powerful on any character. That's a little annoying. No escaping for you. Bouncy, bouncy. Had first footwork. Do I want two footworks in a wraith form? That feels like overkill. I don't think we want to do that. Wraith form blasphemy, oh man. Seems strong. Seems very strong. Or do we go full intangible by adding apparitions to this deck? We already have Wraith Form, so becoming even more intangible does seem very strong. And I do like taking apparitions when I have sustain, which we do have with meal ticket here. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to take apparitions and be a spooky ghost today. Which means with the healing we don't get uh, doesn't matter that much. Cannot be tanged. Need a better damage plan, though. Ah. <laughs> Not paying for Predator. Not now. Do I need to upgrade Wraith Form, or can we go for a third Elite? I should upgrade that Wraith Form. Ah. Tempting, though. Hello! Sure would be a shame if I was so much of a spooky ghost you couldn't hurt me. Now, wouldn't it? to advance this fight. It's not enough to just block for nothing there. Let's do it this way. Uh-oh. Terrifying, actually. That was not the draw we wanted. That didn't need to be intangible there, huh? I'd prefer to preserve health here. Ah. 
even if I have to chip away at that plated armor one at a time for a bit. Blasphemous Wraith Form, gain 10 intangible, die next turn. Well, that just seems good. Seems a little OP. Oh, down to three here. We're actually going to break the armor off this thing? That's sad? Kind of sad. But we do get to demonstrate the thing. Fun fact, did you know if you remove all of the plated armor from the parasite, that it gets stunned for one turn? We can beat Champ. Ugh. 14 health is not that much, huh? Alright, let's get that uh, Wraith Form upgraded. take three to get Bouncing Flask down. Uh, yet again, the downside of the Slaver's Collar really becoming apparent. You don't quite have enough energy for everything. Now I can't play Wraith Form and Catalyst. So probably just play Wraith Form, right? Guarantees we take no damage th through the next two attacks. Let's just do that. I'll wait on Catalyst here if I'm getting a full three more turns to play with. potions for the elite, although a block potion is kind of nice. Do I add deadly poison with a catalyst? I think that I do. Helps against Book of Stabbing quite a bit. But against these ones, this is what the potions are for. This is... Dash is pretty good. Dash saves me from playing at the defend here. Although, currently, I am already doing that. Hmm. Quick slash, then. Okay. Deadly Poison Kata finishes you off, guaranteed. Or we could poison one of the other ones. Seems risky. Guaranteed. Yeah, it's nice to have energy, hey? Feels good. Feels really good. Nice. Even distribution of poison. Like that her dexterity wore off when I played footwork. I was confused for a second. Because we went from negative three to zero. Great fight. Goradin, thanks for the prime sub and the five months. 
of support. Get an Nunchaku and a Poison Potion. And there's another Elite coming up momentarily. Poison Potion with Catalyst is good. Definitely a little bit scared of this fight. I don't have to take it, though. But I sure am going to. Even more energy. Let's go. Okay, we're facing Book of Stabbing. Just go Wraith Form Apparition. Seems smart. We get six turns to kill this thing. We will get hit twice. That's a little spooky, but it's worth it. And then the Poison Pot wants to be on the same turn as the Catalysts. We get a little bit more total poison. Yeah, we go Deadly Poison, Poison Potion, Catalyst to 22. That's pretty good. Could have discarded Apparition on turn one. That's a good point with uh, Survivor. Might have been the smarter line to save two health. Next turn... Take four here, five. Ouch. Ouch. Oh shoot. Piercing Whale still is one by five. It would be Piercing Whale and Neutralize to bring this to zero, but I bottom deck Neutralize here. This is bad. We could die next turn if we don't get block. Uh, we better make sure we play Footwork then so I can actually block with the block card. Those wounds could be drawn immediately, which could be really bad here. Oh, we got the Piercing Whale again. Okay, and I just said Neutralize and Piercing Whale together is 0 by 6. We good, we good. Spooky. Very spooky. Definitely could have died here. But we didn't. Now we get the heal and... We get Ninja Scroll for three shivs on turn one. Good enough with Nunchaku, I guess. Backflip? Sounds good to me. Hard draw is good. Take that Ninja Scroll. There's the heal. We want a Pen Nib? Maybe. Do we want a Noxious Fumes? Maybe. We want a Strike Remove. Definitely. Definitely just want to remove a strike here. We upgrade Deadly Poison, we upgrade Catalyst, and that should kill Champ, right? Then there's this fight. Are we scared of this fight? Kind of. Kind of. I'm willing to strength potion here. Get to that thing. Right. Let's play this then. Take one. Tangible next turn. Okay, let's play this then. One more and we're out of here. for Nunchaku. Unupgraded attacks, I don't think so. Although Flechettes can hit pretty hard here. We need an upgrade. We're going to use Poison. We have Apparitions with the Wraith form. How long can we stay intangible? Currently six turns is how much intangibility we have. 
which is pretty good. Always do better, of course. Gain one days to block one. I don't think so. I think I take that one. I do not allow any days to go in the draw pile. Should be fine to play neutralize. Doesn't even kill the bird. turns, looks like. Let's skip this last apparition, because it's only a 50-50 we get attacked two turns from now. I want that extra poison. Now, nah, dang it. Uh, I guess you was going to say, now would be a good time, Catalyst. Excellent. Yeah, we've had more than a few close calls on this run, but we're still here. I guess that counts for something. How's it going, the real Dather? Welcome back. Hope all's well with you, too. You know, escape plan's okay here. I like escape plan in a deck with uh, footwork, usually. Setup has some potential here, too. We can get an apparition out of our hand. It can set up a wraith form. Not a bad setup, but I don't love it. I think we just want to dig through the deck more quickly here. Teen's not a lot of health, but I like our odds against Champ. Should probably upgrade an Apparition. Did I see the trailer for Spire 2? I did. Very exciting news. Spire 2 is pretty big. Alright, what's this? Tools. I like tools a lot. That can save our apparitions here. Although, not if I draw them all on turn one. Fight. We're looking to stack poison. Uh, and then catalyst once we have enough. We don't want to actually do too many physical attacks. We just want to stack poison. Twelve successful runs in a row, finally. Well done. Been streaking this game is no joke, let me assure you. <laughs> Case is not clear from the stream. Yeah, this game is tough. Very tough at times. Oh boy. Uh, I think 11. Go to 2. Or skip Bouncing Flask. And Deadly Poison? No. We... If we distilled, we could hit Catalyst. That's not acceptable either. Alright, just skip the Poison cards, I guess. Take 
too. Feels bad. Feels really bad. Sort of getting close to half health. We're in real trouble here. And I have to use the thing? I think so. Unless you're telling me neutralize whale saves me? Oh, it does. Okay. Okay. Yikes. Where Wraith Form wanted to go. Now it's go time. Hmm. Every hit point matters, as they say. Well, you later, champ. Easy game. Alive, and we kept the potion too. We've had first wraith form, yes, but what about second wraith form? What if we just add more turns of intangible to the deck and have that be the entire strategy? I think it's a pretty good idea. I'll take that. And Neko is here, or the hovering kite that I talked about. I did mention that hovering kite specifically. I did not get more discard. I have two wraith forms. The apparitions don't love this neck OI, but everything else sure does. Energy will be a struggle in the hallway fights with snack OI, but other than that, I really like the snack OI. We draw. Ninja scroll is really bad now. I should have skipped that. But yeah, we're more likely to get poison and catalyst stuff happening with Snekoi too. So I will take Snekoi. Meaning we draw two additional cards each turn, but now we're confused. I have to go for Burning Elite here. Which means no shop, huh? Yeah, no shop. Ouch. Okay, that part is scary. I do five events? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'll do that. Three treasure chests, please. All right, we're going to have to ration our health very carefully this act. See how this goes. You can go shop? Where? Oh, yeah, I can go to this one or this one. I missed this connection. Maybe should have gone that one. Not sure how I missed that. Not sure. And we block potion already. Good start.
Yeah, the three energy is really tough in the hallway fights. That part is very spooky. Gonna chip their health down currently. Still have two more turns of nigh invulnerability though. So our dexterity is fading. Yeah, I really wish I could play more than one card. Garbage. Tennis. Deadly. Okay. Take two. Thank you. Second dash was Sneko Eyes, not bad. All right, our first bonus relic is going to be Frozen Egg, upgrading any additional powers we get. I don't mind that. I'd really like an after image to cover our block needs in particular. We get to lose a card. We could lose Survivor, Wraith Form, or Dash. I guess we lose Survivor. We haven't had a silent run without a Survivor in a long time, but uh, sure. I guess we'll lose that. And then we'll fight these nerds. that would happen. Oh well. <laughs> we'll draw it again. Take two. Your potion's not bad. Third dash. Second footwork. With all this intangible, footworks don't seem very necessary. I'll take one more dash, though. Damage and block that works even with pretty negative dexterity. 150 for a card remove. Thankfully, we did get a heal, though. Um, also, probably still worth it to get the remove buy more max health. It's not a bad idea. Strawberry is cheaper than the waffle. So we wouldn't buy the waffle, weirdly enough. Sadistic nature is not horrible either, but it's kind of bad. We don't actually apply poison that many times is the current issue. Give me a Crippling Cloud and another, and another Bouncing Flask, and this is better. It does come upgraded for free, which is kind of nice. But I wouldn't actually consider it very good at the moment. So I think I'm just going to cut another Strike here. Or maybe a Defend? Let's cut Defend.
Okay, we're intangible next turn. Just focus on Repto then. Bouncing Flask understands. Bouncing Flask gets it. Poison is a debuff, yes. Can this deck beat Heart? Not quite yet. I think we need maybe a little bit more Poison. Or another good Relic. Perfect did Reptomancer. We get a Maw Bank. That's pretty good. Energy Potion's pretty good. What about Reflex and Tactician? No, we only have Dagger Throw. We don't even have Survivor anymore. Yeah, no, these are terrible. Setup no longer works with Sneko Eyes, so we skip that too. Second Catalyst would be the easiest way for this deck to beat Heart more easily. Burst could work. Crippling Cloud, Bouncing Flask, there's lots of ways to go. Play Bouncing Flask or Footwork Wraithform? No, Wraithform Apparition, right? For Wraithform Apparition. Let's get to five Catalysts again. That's right. That is right. Focus damage on you. But a one? Or why not? And I have two turns to kill the middle one, effectively. turn to deal this. Dang. Sometimes this deck disappoints. In case have them all alive on one hit point. Go for block. Good news. Okay enough with Sneaky Strike. Exploders are very easy because of Intangible. Don't need to worry about them. We're just going to go Intangible. They can't hurt me. They can't hurt me at all. Did I mostly get Energy Pot over Fire Pot for a tough hallway fight? Energy Pot is is so that if Sneko Eye decides everything costs three, I can still play two important cards. Like Bouncing Flask Catalyst. Fire Pot can't recreate the ability to play both of those in the same turn, for example. Uh, we have the White Beast, right? All right, what's this going to do? Totally worth it. All right, sweet. Have we seen Kunai yet? Not on this run. No, not on this run.
Nightmare would make this uh, a lot easier as well. Here is a nice safety mechanism. We're like number two. We've got to skip one of these for the blue key. Art of War ain't it, though. We play no attacks on our turn, gain an additional energy on the next turn. That's very good. Blue key doesn't exist. Don't worry. Good. Love Art of War with Snekawai. On silent. Shenanigans are immense. Perfect. It's like a whole boss relic, basically. If we're just trying to do poison and intangible. Although the dashes disagree. The dashes disagree. Backflip with a plus? Sure. Not particularly important, but I do like it. Giant head. Yeah, I was originally planning to avoid being intangible early in this fight. I guess we can skip the Wraith form for the moment. Just do this. Bouncing Flask. Let's use the Energy Pot for that. We gotta get that started. Catalyst time already. We could try to draw back into it to get more poison, but every turn that it takes, you have to minus the damage from tripling poison now. In the comparison, it's, it's a lot of lost damage if you don't do it right away. So even though you get more poison later, by losing out on damage turns, it's actually less damage. So often better to play immediately than to wait. Kind of depends on how much more poison you're expecting and how many turns you have to work with, but... Heck, speaking of turns, I'm about to run out of turns because I can't play my stupid stuff. Rude. It's all right, we still got upgraded Wraith form.
even have flower on too. Pocket Watch. If we play three or fewer cards on our turn, we'll draw three extra cards on the next turn. And there's the second Bouncing Flask. Now, we are, as they say, cooking with mayonnaise. Things are starting to look up. Is there a plan to do a Watcher streak? Yes, I do intend to streak with the Watcher. After the Silent and the Defects. I'm definitely a butter grilled cheese person myself, P. Scott. Give me the butter. Give me the butter. So I don't need to kill both daggers. Although I just want bouncing flask to hit the right targets, mainly. We can do Flask, Flask, Wraith Form Plus. Cool, I think. <laughs> that was interesting. Sure. Fair enough, I guess, right? <laughs> Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. None of these heal me, right? Okay. Get rid of that. Pocket watch. Just stop there. You know what? Yeah. Good enough. Pick one. I can do more poison. And be more intangible. And stuff. Good fight. So somebody asked if I could beat Heart earlier. Now that we have the Pocket Watch and the second Bouncing Flask, that's when I think we can beat Heart. And anything else we get from here is probably just bonus. For example, a Well-Laid Plans Plus seems very helpful in that we can now retain the Catalyst. Fumes Plus not bad either, but not as good as Well-Laid Plans Plus, I don't think. Also retain Wraith Worms until we actually want to play them, rather than having to play them a turn early. Seems quite good. But can we get through the dreaded Triple Jaw Worms, who are attacking for... Is that 49 damage on turn 1? Good lord. That is, as they say, a lot of damage. Can't draw with Pocket Watch if we retain. True, which is why it's really nice that the Willy plans are optional. And we don't have to retain, but may choose to. Imagine quadruple jaw worms. Please do not traumatize the audience like that. Or the streamer. Is 
Zepsiora. Welcome. Thank you so much for the 23 folk raid. Welcome, welcome, everybody. You're catching us at the end of a Sneko Eye silent run here involving multiple wraith forms, multiple bouncing flasks, big poison energy happening here. We're about to find out if we can beat Time Eater. I think the answer is probably yes. We take one here. Since we have so many ways to be intangible, shouldn't be too, too hard. Ouch. Although we could find ourselves having to use a potion at some point. Thanks to the meal ticket, as long as we get out of the boss gauntlet here, then everything is fine. We'll heal back to full automatically, so we can upgrade the other Bouncing Flask, or the other Wraith Worm, probably the Wraith Worm, now that I think about it. Yeah, probably the Wraith Worm. next turn, or less. So Wraithform Slime, the next turn is just uh, three cards. Retain nothing, so I can draw ten. Or actually only nine. Actually only nine. Kills. We'll just play two more attacks. Donut and Deca or Awaken One are both a bit harder here in that I can't win with just one catalyst. Awaken One comes back to life. Donut and Deca are two separate entities. I think we're fighting the Awakened One first. Hmm. It's not good. Not good. Let me have this fairy in a bottle. I don't think it's gonna work if I just play Wraithworm turn one here, even though it is zero cost. Yeah, Baltery says, I'm having a hard time seeing a path to victory against this one. It, it doesn't involve just blitzing our intangible, because we don't have enough intangible to get through all of this fight with just the poison we have. Um, I would catalyst, I think, only if the bouncing flasks all randomly go on the awakened one here. Then maybe, but I really doubt it. I am going to play this one. That's more along the lines of what I expected. Probably we're just playing defend, taking 17 here. Which I don't love. I 
So I can Bouncing Flask, or I can just Sneaky Strike, which might be smarter. Just Sneaky Strike here. Take 17, go to 5. Feels kind of bad. We have Liquid Memories next turn, we never die. Next turn. Uh oh. Looks like I skip an apparition. That's not good. Sir Penguin, thanks for the prime sub in the three months. This looks like Apparition Die 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 Dash. We can kill one. Then we draw a lot. Could Apparition, Apparition, Liquid Memories defend. Then we're down the Liquid Memories, and there's still two birds. I don't like that very much. Is that all three apparitions? No, there's one more. Okay, we definitely get well-laid plans in play. Starting next turn, it's going to get kind of spooky in here. Definitely running out of time in a moment. Is this fight more difficult for this deck than Heart? Yeah, I think so. Certainly that's potentially true. Be our liquid memories turn, maybe. Definitely time to get poison down. Also, just let the fairy be used here. Play bouncing flask, deadly poison. I think I'm okay with using fairy here. Then just keep Wraith Form, draw nine. Lots of energy next turn. Yeah, I think Shield and Spear will also be harder than Heart with the current deck. Agree with that. Wait, bought myself another turn here. Adrenaline. Wheat. This is looking promising, actually. Looking promising. Ben works, let's acro. Flip. Keep the dash, keep the dash. Multi hit though, right? It's not going to be possible to do normally. Unless. Let's see, 
think this is goes to 48. We can block 16 plus 26. Sounds like enough, right? Forty-two. We take six. Go to three. Okay. And that's with uh, liquid memories here. Still not using wraith form though. The longer we can wait on these wraith forms, the higher our chances. Better yet, if we can kill phase one without having to play Wraith form, then we save the intangible from the turn that it dies. I don't want to three cast dash. I don't want it. So here's a chance. For example, we play Catalyst now, we kill this phase. Then I don't have to play either Wraith form. We can just keep them both. Unless I can full block this turn, which I can. I should do that instead. Keep these two. to do 103 minus 69 to do 34 more damage 12 9 7 3 is one short <laughs> oh you're kidding me right we're one short of saving the catalyst could play the Wraith Form, keep the Catalyst, that means minus two turns of Wraith Form in exchange for keeping Catalysts. That might work. Remember, it's two turns. This turn and next turn, when it actually dies, are both wasted intangible. We do have another Wraith Form, so we'll get the first turn of the big hit blocked. Turn two, turn three. We have to kill on turn four. I think we can do that. So four turns to kill with Catalyst is pretty doable, actually. Okay, let's save Catalyst. Can't block normally, right? No, no way. You get a more strength, but that doesn't matter, of course. Uh, do I set none Shaku? Yeah, we don't need work for next turn. Should have discarded the deadly. Hmm. Probably. Bouncing Flask Plus is too important to not play. Four turns, 60 poisons, a very good start to killing in four turns. And then we take damage cards and play them. Is there any way I can block this turn normally? Save me another turn. 
I think we can actually, yeah, if we can just block this turn without playing Wraith Form, we're really good here. It looks like we can. Yeah, we totally can. Amazing. Okay, we're good then. Path through the fight has been found. Excellent, excellent. Spike in, thanks for the prime sub in the 11 months of support. Whoa, that was spooky. The void almost got me there. for Happy Flower. We still have an... Uh, no, no, we're done. We're done. I was going to say, we have another boss? No, we don't. My goodness. I think I can handle another boss. GG with a turn to spare. Only cost us both potions. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of these bouncing flasks. Deal 2071. The heart squirms and bleeds, but is ultimately still pounding. Alright, we're definitely gonna upgrade. Now that I think more about the heart fight, we should upgrade the bouncing flask because we have enough turns. We just need to kill. Also, the 15 damage multi hits are gonna kill me if I run out of dexterity, so we need to make sure the damage is there rather than one more turn of invulnerability. And Sneko Skull definitely helps make sure the damage is there. So does Caltrops Plus. Sneko Skull is definitely huge. We take Distilled Chaos and Tropic? No, I, I buy Cauldron, surely. Yeah, we buy Cauldron for better potions. Cool, we get to buy Cauldron. Which has a Sneko Oil and a Power Potion. Those are both good. Block Potion's pretty good, too. Definitely taking Sneko Oil. Draw five cards and randomize our hand can help us out of a bad situation. I think Block Pot, because... Beat of Death. We only have 33 health here. Blip, Blurp, Bloop. Blarp. Let's buy this, too. Discovery? Yeah. Take a discovery. Yeah, Disco seems like it's got to be decent, right? Okay, forget, forget the shivs. Let's just lean into Pocket Watch here. Play three cards this turn. We can do Dash, Defend, Caltrops, or Dash, Defend, Die to Die. I'd rather play Caltrops. And we have best chance to get uh, Intangibility next turn. I was hoping. This could be spooky. Oh, good lord. Well, that's not good. Can't draw more cards when my hand's already full, either. So do I well aid plans and then snack a whale, or just snack a whale? We definitely have to use the Sneko Oil here. I think we will lead plans first. Let's just draw one more card, too, which is nice. And then hopefully we can play backflips, but we'll see. There we go. Okay. Zero cost. Draw two. There we are. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sneko Oil. 
And I think don't play dash, because Art of War. Yeah. Spooky, right? Keep the dash, keep the footwork. Lose the three cost catalyst. Or maybe keep it. It's worth playing at three cost. It's worth playing at three cost. Get in there, Caltrops. Flash like you're doing something. I right, know you're doing something. Think you liar. With three cost. Ooh. Terrible. <laughs> the Wraith Form Plus. Let the Catalyst go, good lord. Okay. Fair enough. I don't mind. We're already dying. There's the kunai. Cool. We play three attacks in one turn, we'll gain dexterity, and we get more dexterity with the dex potion. Do I want a predator? I don't think so. Okay, we've made it to the heart fight. I think our odds are pretty good here. The odds are great here, actually. Pretty good turn one. Uh, we're not guaranteed survival turn two, though. That's a bit scary. Might have been nicer to draw more cards. I've got seven decks, though. Really, that's enough? Oh, good. We drew Apparition. Yeah, slightly different hand on this turn. We just die. Can always happen. Uh, I think I go Apparition, Caltrops, take three. Art of War energy really made the difference. Really making the difference. This. Don't play Wraith Forms. No, do play both Wraith Forms. Otherwise, we're going to have a really bad time. 
Oh, I also have to block, huh? Let's make a block potion here. Then I draw 10. We guaranteed get well eight plans, and I can draw 9. It's not a guarantee, but I'll have 7 dexterity. I'll play your game. Codename Countess, thanks for the prime sub in the seven months. Love support. Keep neutralized bouncing. So I can weaken if I need to. Draw one less card for that. It's safer though. We're good. Someone act right soon. good though. Manaz4466, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. GG. Good B. Mr. Hart. GG. Duffy but a goodie. Wait, did I? Interesting distribution on the Sneko I hear. <laughs> GG. The silent takes the cake. Certainly not an easy run, but a good one, that's for sure. With more than a few close calls. Not bad. Not too bad. Isn't it normally distributed? Yes, which is weird because it's equal odds for all of these, right? You wouldn't expect a normal distribution. You'd expect a flat distribution. GG. Nicopedia, thanks for the 1,000 bits of support. Ain't this a good time? It's a good time. Has it been done? The spire sleepeth, and so shall I. GG, yeah, without without both the pocket watch and the art of war, I don't think this would have worked out in the end game. We really did need that extra bit of energy. I show you all at the end of the day that skill is a massive factor in this game. It is, it really is. And it is in uh, Slice and Dice, too, which we're going to be switching to momentarily here. That one seems more unfair to me because you can just roll blank sides over and over again, but a lot of skill can factor into a Slice and Dice run. White Bee Statue was also crucial, right? I think without the White Bee statue, we, we, we couldn't have taken the Slaver's Caller, and that would have made the late game a lot harder, too. And we barely beat Awaken one. That was so scary. I have a feeling that Slice and Dice doesn't care that it's unfair sometimes. No, it doesn't. It does not. It does not care at all.
Slaver's Color, then Sneko Eye. I don't feel bad about our picks this run. Too bad. I think the Wraith Forums definitely made the run possible. Yeah, the shopless route still having a shop was really nice. We got a couple unknown merchants that were very helpful. For surprise heals off the meal ticket. Meal ticket healed 47 this run. That was good. That was really good. So what's going to happen next Twitch chat is that I'm going to take a quick five or so minute break. And when I return, I'm going to be switching over here to Slice and Dice. Let's see if I can get the Slice and Dice menu music to play appropriately this time. So I'll be back in a few minutes, and we're going to be playing some classic hard, continuing our, our current five streak on that difficulty. See if we can get towards double digits. So back in a few Twitch chat. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> 